my name's Mairead and in this episode of Skull Namara I want to talk to you about how awesome seaweed and other algae are. I'm going to show you a really funky animal that kind of looks like a flower or maybe an alien and I'm also going to talk to you about kelp which is a type of seaweed that grows in beautiful forests underneath the ocean. All you need to do is make sure that you have a piece of paper or a page in your copybook and something to write with so that you can make some notes about the facts that I'll tell you. The first thing I want to talk to you about today is algae. Algae are like the plants of the ocean and I get very excited about them and I think when you hear about all the amazing things that they do you'll think they're pretty awesome as well. So algae include seaweeds and also phytoplankton. Phytoplankton are this type of algae that float in the ocean. They're really really tiny, you need a microscope to see them and there could be millions of them in a single drop of water. So. Algae are like plants that we find on land because they use sunlight to make their food and to grow. So they use the energy from the sun to make their food and grow. And when they do this, it's called photosynthesis. So that's a really big word and I'll be very impressed if you remember it. When algae do this thing called photosynthesis, they do a couple of really, really important things. The first thing is they make oxygen. So we think a lot about getting our oxygen from trees and plants on land, and we do get some of our oxygen from, from the plants on land. But scientists think that we actually get more of our oxygen from the algae in the ocean, and especially the phytoplankton are very important for providing us with oxygen. So scientists think that we might get as much as 70% of our oxygen from these algae in the ocean. So if you think of that, imagine you take 10 breaths, well, the oxygen in seven of those may have come from the ocean. So that's pretty cool. The other thing that happens during photosynthesis is that algae use carbon dioxide. And this is very important for climate change. So if you've heard about climate change, you'll know that it's happening because there's too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere or in the air. But some of this carbon dioxide can get into the ocean and then algae use it when they're doing photosynthesis. So algae are really, really helping to slow down climate change. Now, if all of that didn't make you think already that algae are awesome, they also are really, really important as they make food. So small animals in the ocean, imagine the phytoplankton that's in the ocean, small animals will eat those small small little algae and then bigger animals will eat those so they're really really important in the food chain and also humans can eat algae because we can eat seaweed. Seaweed is really nu nutritious it's eaten a lot in, in other countries and some people eat it here in Ireland as well because it's really nutritious and full of healthy healthy things for our bodies. If it doesn't sound very tasty to eat seaweed. You might be surprised because maybe you've eaten it already without even knowing because seaweed is sometimes used to make ice cream. So there's a substance in seaweed that helps to thicken ice cream. So remember that the next time you're having some ice cream, you might be eating some seaweed in there. Now to remember some of the facts about algae, I want you to make some notes now in your copybook or on a piece of paper. So the first thing I want you to write down is write down the word algae and draw a line under that. So you have algae. Now there's some big words in this one. So if you need to pause the video to finish writing them, that's okay. You can pause and take your time. The second thing I want you to write is the word photosynthesis. So remember that's the way that algae use energy from the sun to make their food and to grow photosynthesis and the next thing I want you to write is make oxygen because remember they may provide as much as 70% of the oxygen that we breathe make oxygen and now the last thing I want you to write is reduce carbon dioxide 
because when they do this thing called photosynthesis, they use carbon dioxide and it's really, really important for slowing down climate change. Okay, so you might need to take a big deep breath after all that writing. There were some big words there. And when you breathe out, think of the oxygen that was in that breath and say, algae, you are awesome. <laughs> I want to show you these here, these blobs on the rock. Some people think that these may be some sort of algae or seaweed, but in actual fact, they're an animal. These are anemones. And when the tide is out and when they're exposed to the air, they'll close themselves up. Like other animals, they don't want to dry out when the water is back at low tide and when they're out in the air. But when the water comes up to cover them, so later when this rock pool fills up, these anemones will open out and they'll have these amazing tentacles. So they look maybe like some sort of an alien or some sort of an alien flower. They can have up to 200, almost 200 tentacles in their body. And the tentacles will float out when the water is in covering them. This type of a, an, em, an, em, <laughs> an anemone <laughs> is uh, called a beetle anemone because it has these blue beadlets around the top of its body. Can you think of another type of animal that kind of has a blobby body and also has tentacles? If you were thinking of a jellyfish, then very good because these anemones are actually related to jellyfish. They're kind of like their distant cousins. And like jellyfish, they have stinging cells. So they use their stinging cells to catch their food. Anemones, when the water is in, they'll have their tentacles out underwater. Their tentacles are quite sticky and they'll be waiting for some sort of an animal to go past. So maybe a little fish or a shrimp or maybe even a crab. They'll catch that animal in their tentacles and then they'll use their stinging cells to kill it and to eat it. And anemones are, actually have an opening that's both their mouth and their bum. So they'll eat their food through their mouth and then they'll do their poo out the same opening. So it's kind of gross. They're also, they also use their stinging cells to fight each other. So they're very territorial. I think because these ones here are all on the same rock, are all very close on the same rock, I think they must be related because they don't usually like to be on the rock near other animals that they aren't related to. So they must be part of the same family. And if another animal comes in and tries to take their spot on the rock, They'll use the stinging cells in their beadlets to fight them off and to hopefully make them move away because they want to keep a nice patch on the rock where they'll be able to find a lot of food and also not spend too much time out in the air. So to remember about the anemone, I want you to write down the word anemone and draw a line under it. It can be a difficult word, word to say, and I try to remember it by thinking of a letter M sitting on top of a letter E. So it's an M, an E. An M and E. The next thing I want you to write is tentacles, because they have these tentacles that float in the water when they're covered. And the next thing I want you to write is stinging cells. And then the last thing, if you remember, they use the tentacles and the stinging cells to eat other animals. So they are a predator. So I want you to write the word predator. So they are pretty funky seashore animals, even if the name is hard to say. But think of the letter M sitting on a letter E. Anemone. Anemone. <laughs> There are over 500 species or types of seaweed in Ireland. And seaweeds are always one of three colors. They're either brown, red, or green. I wanna show you a really cool brown seaweed. This one is called kelp. There are different types or different species of kelp. 
and they always occur close to the water so they like to be covered in the water you you don't usually see them um, growing up the beach because they want to be down close to low tide and these are really these can grow to really really huge lengths um, this one I guess is is longer than me it's probably a couple of meters long and if you think that there's some of it under the water as well even longer and some species of kelp in the world they can grow as much as half a meter in a single day um, so they're they're really really uh, amazing algae um, kelp are a type of brown seaweed and they attach they'll always attach to the rock or to the bottom using what's called a hold fast so this might look a little bit like the roots of a plant but in actual fact it's quite different because it's just securing the seaweed to the rock or somewhere hard that it can hold on to. Um, the other part of the seaweed that I'm showing you here is called, these are called fronds, so not leaves but fronds of the seaweed. And kelp, if you can imagine, when the tide comes in this beautiful long kelp will float up in the water and as we spoke about already it needs to get sunlight so that it can grow so it needs to float up and reach up towards the sun to get the energy from the sun and in doing that like other algae it produces oxygen and it also uses carbon dioxide and kelp in particular is really important for slowing down climate change when kelp grows in big amounts, when a lot of kelp grows together, it's called a kelp forest. So we think of forests as just being on land with trees, but in actual fact, you can get kelp forests in the sea. And these are really, really important places for animals because imagine you've got this beautiful long kelp growing in the water and it's a really good place for animals to find shelter so that they can hide from any other animal that's going to try and eat them and then also find a lot of food in there. So they're very, very important for biodiversity because a lot of living things can survive in a kelp forest. And also, as I said already, very important for reducing climate change. So to remember about the kelp, I want you to make some notes. The first thing I want you to write is kelp and draw a line underneath that. The second thing I want you to write is brown seaweed. And remember also that there are two other colors of seaweed, red and green. So you have kelp, brown seaweed. The third thing I want you to write is hold fast to remember that part of the, of the algae that helps us to attach to the rock. And then the last thing I want you to write is forests, to remember that you get kelp growing in forests under the ocean. So they're really amazing, beautiful seaweed. And as much as we need to protect our forests and our trees on land, we also need to protect our kelp forests in the ocean. I have an exercise that I'd like you to do after learning all of those cool ocean facts. I thought it'd be cool if you wrote a thank you letter to the ocean. So you can say thanks for all the amazing things that we get from the ocean, you can say thanks to the algae, you can say thanks to some of the animals and I'd love to see what you write in your letter. So you can email it or send a photo of your letter to skullnamara at gmail.com and I love pictures too so if you want to draw some pictures I'd be delighted. It's nearly low tide now so I'm going to start heading away because the water is going to come in but hopefully I'll see you again soon. This type of a, an em, an em, <laughs> an <ebony. laughs> When you get to go explore the seashore yourself, there are a few things that are really important to remember. The first thing is always go with an adult. The second thing, check the tide times before you go. So the best time to go rock pooling or exploring the seashore is before the time of low tide. And you've got to be really careful when the water starts to come back in 
when it's moving towards high tide because it'll cover the rocks and you really, really don't want to get stuck on the rocks. The third th thing to remember is to wear shoes that are uh, secure and that have good grip on the rocks. I like to wear a pair of old runners, they're perfect. And wellies can be good as well sometimes. And then the final thing is always leave no trace. So what I mean by that is when I go to the beach or the seashore or anywhere in nature or in the countryside, I don't leave anything behind me. I make sure to bring everything home with me. Um, I don't bring any animals or shells because the seashore is where they belong. So remember always in the countryside, at the beach, wherever you are, leave no trace.